Did you know that humanity faced the strongest solar storm in 20 years last month? Telescopes on Earth and in space observed multiple solar explosions heading our way. In response, the Space Weather Prediction Center, SWPC, issued an urgent warning about a severe space weather event. At least seven of these outbursts slammed into our planet with billions of tons of solar plasma, creating the most intense geometric storm since 2003. And this event isn't the end of the sun's aggression. Another monster solar storm might soon make it to our planet. Join us at Universe Revealed for an in-depth insight into the upcoming solar storms, which might be the most intense in over a century. What happened on May 8th has set the scientific community on high alert. Years of meticulous planning helped us weather this severe storm, but the big question remains, are we prepared for an even bigger solar event that could be on the horizon? Although Earth largely managed to withstand the intense solar storm this summer, experts are still worried. According to them, more powerful eruptions may continue to occur until 2025. A scientist from the Smithsonian explained that the sun hasn't reached its strongest phase yet. This superactive phase, called the solar maximum, happens every 11 years. During this time, the sun gets very active. Its energy output increases because there's more turbulence on its surface. This maximum is expected to happen in July 2025. Dr. Jonathan McDowell from the Smithsonian and Harvard Center for Astrophysics said that we might face much bigger storms in the next year or two. They're keeping a close eye on the sun's activity to be ready for any big solar storms that might come our way. The recent solar storm caused extreme geomagnetic conditions due to a disturbance on the sun's surface called a sunspot. This sunspot was even bigger than the one that caused the famous 1859 Carrington event. What's the Carrington event, you ask? The Carrington event was a powerful solar storm that occurred in September 1859. It was named after the British astronomer Richard Carrington, who observed and documented the event. During this event, a huge solar flare erupted from the sun. It released a massive amount of energy and sent a surge of charged particles toward Earth. This solar storm caused spectacular auroras visible as far south as the Caribbean. It also disrupted telegraph systems nationwide. Reports said telegraph lines sparked and operators got shocked. It also messed up the global communication system and even affected ship compasses. The Carrington event is one of the scariest solar storms recorded in history. Space weather experts now believe that if larger solar storms hit us directly, the impact could be worse than the Carrington event. Dr. McDowell says that satellite operators are worried about this situation. They're constantly monitoring the sun's activity to protect their satellites from any potential damage. In 2019, during what's called a solar minimum, there weren't many sunspots visible on the sun's surface. As we approach the solar maximum in July 2025, experts predict we could see up to 115 sunspots, according to the U.S. National Space Weather Prediction Center. These areas on the sun's surface are the busy hubs of magnetic activity. They create solar flares, which are bursts of energy. They also create coronal mass ejections, CMEs, which are big eruptions of plasma. The sun's energy output rises by only 0.1% during its 11-year cycle, but this small rise is mostly in the sunspot areas. This massive influx of solar energy, totaling 173,000 terawatts, often leads to significant disruptions. It can disrupt satellites, create radio blackouts, and even mess with the power grid. The world's satellite infrastructure is already feeling pressure, even before the busiest time next year when Earth might face lots of sunspots. That's because of more radiation from the sun as it gets closer to its strongest phase. Dr. McDowell recently mentioned that even when there were no big solar storms, the Hubble telescope's movement has sped up 10 times. He said that while solar storms are big events, they're not the only things affecting satellites. According to him, in the next few years, satellites might be affected more than they have been in the past 10 years. In May 2024, a geomagnetic solar storm disrupted GPS satellites, putting a pause on planting operations for farmers in the U.S. Midwest. One farmer, Kevin Kenny, mentioned that due to the solar storm, all tractors in the field are currently shut down without GPS, reported 404 Media. Patrick O'Connor, a farm owner near Minneapolis, expressed, quote, I've never dealt with anything like this, unquote. While some impacts were observed on orbital astronomy platforms familiar to Dr. McDowell, he believes that greater risk may still lie ahead. The good thing that came along with the recent solar storm was the visually stunning show of auroras. But how is a solar storm related to auroras? Here it is. 
Solar storms can create auroras by interacting with Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere. Solar storms release a stream of charged particles, mainly electrons and protons, from the Sun's outer atmosphere known as the corona. These charged particles travel through space in what is called the solar wind. When they reach Earth, they interact with our planet's magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field deflects most of these charged particles away from the planet. However, some of them get trapped and funneled toward the polar regions. As these charged particles enter Earth's atmosphere near the poles, they collide with gas molecules such as oxygen and nitrogen. These collisions excite the gas molecules, causing them to emit light. The colors of auroras, such as green, red, and purple, are determined by the types of gas molecules involved and the altitude at which their collisions occur. The result is the beautiful light display we see as auroras, also known as the northern and southern lights. To put it straight, solar storms energize Earth's upper atmosphere. Charged particles interact with gases in the atmosphere near the poles, leading to the creation of auroras. It's quite clear that solar storms give a kickstart to auroras, but why do they disrupt satellites? Let's understand through the most recent example of a solar storm. Due to the solar storm that occurred this summer, energetic particles from the sun heated up Earth's upper atmosphere. The air became denser, similar to the heaviness felt in a sauna. The increased density caused more drag on satellites, slowing them down as they orbited. The Hubble Space Telescope usually moves in a steady circle around Earth, but now, because of the recent storm, its path is more like a long, spiraling descent back towards Earth. Dr. McDowell noticed that because of the storm. Hubble is moving about 80 meters closer to Earth each day instead of the usual 40 meters. Astronomers studying the Hubble Space Telescope found that the solar storm's drag effect may cause the telescope to reach the end of its operational life a bit earlier than expected. But it's not just the drag that affects satellites. A storm impacts satellites in several areas. The impacts include more drag, increased radiation exposure, and a higher risk of static discharges. The astrophysicist mentioned that during a solar storm, mission controllers are more alert compared to a regular day. Also, NASA sets an excellent example of how satellites can be safeguarded during a solar storm. Dr. McDowell is part of the team working with NASA's Chandra X-ray Telescope Observatory. This telescope was sent into a distant orbit about 86,500 miles away from Earth back in 1999. Its main job is to capture X-ray signals from distant objects. These include exploded stars, galactic clusters, and spinning black holes. It helps scientists learn more about these cosmic objects and the X-ray emissions they produce. He mentioned that they took steps over the weekend to protect some instruments from the storm's effects. This involves selectively shutting down parts of the telescope to guard Chandra's sensors against electrical damage during the solar storm while keeping the spacecraft operational. The astrophysicist pointed out that expensive satellites have been lost in previous solar storms. Are there any ways humans too can mitigate the impact of a solar storm? Absolutely. First and foremost is an early warning system. Monitoring the sun for signs of increased solar activity can give us an advance notice of an upcoming solar storm. This information can help prepare spacecraft and infrastructure on Earth. Then comes grid protection. On Earth, power grid operators can take steps to protect electrical infrastructure. This includes isolating vulnerable components, reducing power loads, and implementing protocols to manage fluctuations caused by solar-induced geomagnetic storms. After that comes communication protocols. Establishing clear communication protocols during solar storms is crucial. This includes relaying information about potential disruptions to satellite operators, airlines, and other industries that rely on sensitive technology. Lastly comes public awareness. Educating the public about solar storms and their potential impact can help individuals and organizations take appropriate precautions. This includes understanding the risks to technology such as GPS systems and being prepared for possible disruptions. Currently, the primary way space weather experts predict major solar storms is by tracking sunspots. Dr. McDowell explained, we observe sunspots which are active areas on the sun's surface. By monitoring their movement, we can estimate when they will be facing Earth, typically within a couple of days. If a sunspot erupts or burps during that time, it could lead to a significant solar storm affecting us. The sun is waking up from its long sleep, stretching its rays to greet the waking world. Make sure you shake hands with our fireball safely. What are your thoughts on these sunspots and solar storms? Let us know in the comments below.